explanations that uh, old jujutsu may also be used on street situation, daily life situation, especially to protect the sword and avoid the enemy to take out of our sword. Now, the thing is that on rude jujutsu or ancient jujutsu, we have some body elements that were used specially to harm the opponent as much as possible. So, for that we are going to see some techniques that belong to the group of attacks to tear the ear, to actually use the nail against the eyes, try to cut them. Uh, also, we may consider that sometimes they used to have a large nail just with this intention. And also, we are going to act on some, some vulnerable areas, craniofacial areas or muscles area that will cause a lot of pain. So, in this case, what we are going to see now is the combat part, I mean the renkaku part, not only the jujutsu classical techniques, walking through the streets or in a daily life situation, but I mean body contact with a short distance. So in renkaku jujutsu techniques, we need to control the arm and we have a lower base. And the thing is that this also reminds us that the person could have any secondary weapon to attack us. So, I must control the arm, he must control my arm, because from here, Jujutsu always aims to take some body parts and grab and pull out. So, as ear, eyes, nose, throat, and also some muscles area specific that cause a lot of pain, just like grabbing the, this part of the arm and press it with the nails, and also under the ribs, and especially the, those internal areas of the body that are more vulnerable than the external area. We used to say that we have to consider just like the energy polarity that we have young and in. We have this external area that is young and it also can absorb impacts or attacks better than the inside part. So this is more vulnerable. And also we have here some anatomical structures that were also uh, target of those attacks. So they used to really train to take out arteries, veins, tendons and also cause pain by grabbing those vulnerable areas with nails and just like the nipple and chest muscles and under the ribs. We may also consider that some parts of legs, groin and knees were also great targets for the jujutsu. So we have some areas that really cause a lot of pain near the leg, near the, the knee, groin, genital areas. So this we have to have our, in our mind when we try to understand the classical jujutsu techniques. So the first thing is by protecting my head, what I try to avoid is for him to grab those areas of my face and cranial areas. Also to control his arm in case he tries to grab any secondary weapon. So from here, afterwards, they develop the impact ideas as well. So we have areas to impact and also to fracture, just like knee and arm and head, also to use on his on classical techniques. So on Renkaku Jujutsu study, we may consider everything, every target situation that I can use and also I can suffer in this case to protect myself. And especially if I'm using a secondary weapon as well that I will harm more the enemy. So the first point that we need to consider is that I try to control him psychologically by attacking areas that will bleed more than normal or will cause more pain so he can barely stand or barely protect himself from other attacks. 
in case of tanto, those same areas that I would attack myself by using nails or hand, I will use the weapon. So also by fracturing and using those secondary weapons at the same time. It doesn't matter if I want to attack leg, knee, and then I can use the weapon as well to finish the combat. So these were the ideas of a classical jujutsu, it's a root jujutsu, very violent jujutsu. And as you can see, those targets were very precise to finish the combat as soon as possible.